Check, check, check. Check, 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 one, two, check, 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 check. Check, 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 one, two. I know. You said I'm good?
meeting to <laughs> workshop meeting. Okay. Work session. Workshop. <laughs> of September 21st. And we're going to stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, Secretary uh, Callaway Rodriguez, can you give you your comments, please? Sure. Director Grata? Here. Director Livingwood? Here. Director Harhai? Director Kovach? Here. Director Waco? Here. Director Kazenko? Here. Director Callaway Rodriguez? Here. Director Fort? Here. Director Habel? Here. Eight present? One absent? One absent? I don't think so. All right, so I will start by saying we had an executive session at 5.30 prior to the meeting to discuss personnel issues. And next, can we get an approval of the agenda? Uh, we approve the agenda? No, that's no. Monday. All right, till the meeting. Okay, so we'll, we'll just go through, then we're gonna have the meeting it's approval, and we're going to go down to special voting notice approved. That's correct. On August 10th, 2021. And we'll go through the regular minutes approval of August 16th. We're going to um, have comments from citizens relative to the agenda. Same thing we've already all, already have done in the past. And they're gonna state their name and municipality. One thing that we're doing different and we've changed a little bit. Citizens wishing to comment must be a resident of the district. Comments are limited to two minutes and must pertain to items appearing on the agenda. Comments must be directed to the entire board. All speakers are reminded to refrain from naming any students, staff members, parents, community members, or implying such names within your comments. The board's response will be addressed by the superintendent first and the board president second, as directed and counseled by the solicitor. So basically, the opening statement, you'll have two minutes. There can be elaboration after that. And if somebody wants to comment. Uh, also, if a board want, member wants to comment directly, they'll be called upon. So it keeps everything in order so some people aren't shouting to another, you know, one member, then another member, and everybody's talking. Um, this new policy was enacted to keep an orderly because we got out of a little bit out of control so i was asked to do that and that's what we're going to do so next after and that is the agenda so the comments can also be after the board meeting and it's going to be in the same format and you can comment on just about any school you know procedure Next are communication information only, and that's monthly de departmental reports. And that'll be from all the department heads, Greg Stieber, Dave Bichetta, Matt Humbert, um, Jason Zadrozny, and our business manager, Crystal Clark. Um, next will be an approval of the WIU minutes. And next, we will go down to the CWCTC 
Joint Operating Committee reports. And then the prior approval requests. Um, there's tuition reimbursement. And I don't know if I have to say, do I have to say all these names? No. no. Auditorium seating, we have approval to do um, new auditorium seating here. Next will be an MOU for the ESP1 contract. Yeah, go ahead. Where you see, yes, it's a discussion of replacing. Uh, I did uh, the drama presentation asked Michael Roselle, uh, you know, that project that I kind of had in mind that came from him three years ago. And I said, if you had a choice, what would it be? He did say auditorium seating. I've been in nice theaters where the seating doesn't seem to be this bad, but it's, is it that bad that we ought to do it? I don't know. I don't know. Did we, and we've discussed that. Yeah. We've talked we've, about it before, but I still can't see Dr. Sable and Heath are here, but is the auditorium seating that bad? Yes. It is? Okay. I'll well, take your word for it. <laughs> yeah, Joe. Okay. But I did ask him what if he had a choice. He did say auditorium seating. I just want to be reassured in my own mind that we're making the right choice here. Thank this, you. And we have that sample up in the media center. I don't know if you saw it. I did not see yes, it. Yes, I think it's a red one. one. I don't think. Okay. Okay, it wasn't pointed out to me. I'll take a look at it. We'll get back up. Thank you. So, Doctor Sable, what's the what's the issue with the seating? I I can see. It's, I know the seats aren't staggered. You know we're. Okay. Right. Usefulness. Like college. I, I would ask if you took maybe the six or eight or ten best sections and either if there's a possibility that they will be useful in another setting in another building that maybe we consider you know salvaging what we can or putting some in storage in case there's some future use for instance down at the uh re Purpose the uh, Ross Traver Middle School or somewhere else. I don't know. But it seems to me that if there are some that are in very good shape, maybe we ought to retain them and see if there's any use for them elsewhere in our properties. These lower levels, like, on the sub version, um, that's part of the, the um, I don't know what that But we have a lot of room with the plex, number one, number two. But if there's some place where, because of the staff having experience more so than me, where they might be a, an appropriate application or use for them, that we look at that. Would there be also another, I don't know, use for them, like a donation to? Or. Or, yes, we could yeah. donate them to another facility that would be i don't know who if they would bear the cost of removal and transportation maybe I, yeah i don't know i would hate to see them just be you know yeah, discarded sure 
I'm just talking about a few now. They would have to pay the charges if it's some outside property. But I would rather see them be of some use rather than end up in Ross River Mountain. <clears throat> Just a thought. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Chu. All right. Okay. So getting back, we have the MOU for the ESP81, and which we had discussed. So then, when um, the next item is renaming RMS, and um, I think we're all on board with the. Uh, you want to release the name of it? <laughs> uh, the renaming of RMS will be now Leopard Hall. And that came about, Joe, do you want to discuss that now or do you want to? Well, yeah, I can. Or you want to wait till a regular meeting? We'll wait till regular, regular meeting, probably. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we'll, we'll give the story, but I think it made sense because Obviously, we're the leopards. If you want, I can have the gentleman uh, hopefully if he wants, if he wants to be president at that meeting, and we can recognize him for his suggestion. And his plan is also to do a related project, which costs will be underwritten by the charitable fund. Okay. That would be lovely. Thank you, John. So if he could make it, that'd be great. Um, next, we have um, board action required. Which is MES Title One plan, which MES, MES stands for Marion Elementary okay. School. Okay. Huh. Just want to be certain, yes, sir. All right. The next item is leasing of a new truck. And I believe that um, Mr. Abel, you had a question. Did you? Yeah, I just I reached out to Crystal when I, I want to know why the information I received only listed one bid and I know it's co-stars and co-stars are supposed to be the same price but I would prefer that we get more than one bid from Sea Harbor Windstar just just so we I know the Water Authority Board we bid out and we save like nine hundred to a thousand dollars on each truck that we purchase just by getting competitive bids and also I, I was wondering why we're leasing it instead of just buying it outright and what about did you get an answer to leasing as opposed to purchasing? Uh, sort of. I'm kind of curious why, myself. Yeah. I, Crystal, myself. Would you like that? Sure. I, you know, going forward in, in hindsight, these purchases should come to the business office. Um, Jason and I should have a discussion. We should agree upon um, what goes on to the agenda, and then I should give what goes on to the agenda to Mallory so that we're all on the same page. Um, I did not see this information or um, give a recommendation as to lease or purchase. Um, that being said, I will look at the cost variance and um, do what's best for the district and report back to the board next week. And may I ask too, because I see the proposal as a, a truck with a lot of bells and whistles. And they may be necessary, I don't know, but we ought to look and, and make sure that we're getting, you know. I'm gonna uh, defer to Dr. Williams for that. We are, um, we have three maintenance staff now instead of four. Um, so to deem the, the fleet purchases, you know, necessary to maintain school operations, I, I think that Dr. Williams, Jason, and I need to have a conversation. I'm just trying to figure out, I'm looking at a purchase price of 54,639 and an annual payment through a lease of 11,670. Wouldn't it be better just to, I'm, I'm saying, why not just buy the truck, right? Well, I think that 50 is just the body. I think that he needs to add uh, to like yeah. the utility bed to the chassis of the truck. Sure. Um, when we did the budget and Jason and I talked with the former superintendent, um, we budgeted um, a lease payment. He wanted two trucks <clears throat> and we budgeted $1,000 a month for each truck. Um, I believe they were like eighty dollars to $90,000 at the time. Okay. Because uh, I was going like, to. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were done. Oh, I, I was going to say it just. To, yeah. I would like to have more information as well on this. Um, so I don't know if we need to remove this from the agenda for Monday. I mean, I don't think it's a necessity. It has to hurry and be approved for Monday's meeting. 
Um, and, and if the other board members agree, I would like more discussion on this topic. I think that Jason's concern, I'm speaking for Jason, is that he's not ordering a truck. They have one in inventory and cars with the chips and everything's very difficult to, to, um, to obtain. Yes. Um, so I think that's why he wanted to act on this quickly. Um, but whatever you guys tell us. Well, and the other one wasn't even available. I don't think it was an inventory. And did he, is the other one, it's not, it's in no good. Yeah, the, the second truck that he was looking at, that's on a, uh, a 30 month delay. Oh. So almost three full years before he can get a, a replacement truck of similar quality um, to replace the second truck that he was looking for. So when he saw that this truck was available, he wanted to try to secure this so we're not two and a half or three years out from getting a vehicle. And the one that we're replacing, why are we replacing? Because it went bad, it's no good. It's yeah, it's what's... no seven. It's okay. beyond its, it's life done. expectancy. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so to your point, Director Tolway Rodriguez, I'd like to suggest that uh, in Crystal's point, Crystal, Dr. Williams, and Jason meet before Monday, you know, discuss, you know, what the requirements are. And once the requirements are defined and knowing what truck is in inventory, do the lease versus buy analysis. And when we're on the same page and the administration comes back to the recommendation, you know, we could support it given everything out. But again, appreciate, you know, again, you know, one thing that, you know, we're hearing is there should be collaboration between, you know, the department manager, the business manager, and the superintendent. So we come together with a good recommendation that the board can get, you know, get behind and support as opposed to seeing something on the agenda without the business manager and superintendent get a chance to kind of weigh on us. So that's, that's a good process change. So if we could get that done by Monday, I think we can move forward. I agree. You know, John uh, Abel, with regard to your question, I think that the uh, base bid is the same amount that you would pay, whether you got it from C. Harper or anybody else or what's the win or for, but the thing is uh, availability. Uh, where the cost gets driven up a little bit, and I mentioned some of these bells and whistles, some things are necessary, like I see there's a snow plow attachment and the plow itself and everything, and I'm sure we need that. But maybe a better look is, is what we need to take into the whole proposal. I would just ask Dan real quick, being that you're really well versed in this, um, is there benefits for leasing versus buying with depreciation for taxes and writing off and, and things like that? I mean, would that be probably part of the reason that we're we're going into this is, is the long-term benefits uh, from a financial health standpoint? Or? Yeah, exactly. Crystal will do the analysis. And again, if she would need support, she could ask for it. But again, I'm confident that Crystal can do that lease versus my analysis. It's just, it's important that our, our department managers meet with the business manager and superintendent. So our administration teams align and come to the recommendation with the board. Because again, you know, we're just kind of, you know, I think that'll be an effective process change. So just, thank you. There's no tax implications, lease versus buy versus school district. Yeah, we're, we're tax exempt, so I don't think that, that's an issue there. Um, and I know there's no negotiation on price because they have new us. cars available. Yeah. Take it's or leave it. yeah, it's, they have us. <laughs> yeah. For budgetary purposes, traditionally, when we buy school buses, vans, service trucks, even the Bobcat loader, we bought them under a lease purchase agreement so that we would spread the load out financially over a period of time. Okay. Right. Okay. Buses, yeah. We don't buy them outright. Okay, so do we have any plans for after the five-year lease? Do we plan on buying it outright or there is a dollar turning it option in? buyout? It's a dollar option buyout after the five years so we can purchase it for an additional dollar. Yeah, so, I, Chris, I'd be interested in the numbers because I think it might be a little cheaper if you would buy it outright. Right, we did not budget to buy it outright. And sometimes there is a value in cash flow, being that when we come to the end of the year, if we would have to do a tax anticipation note, the cost of that and issuing that is way more than, you know, the 0.9 or, you know, whatever the percentage would be to borrow from another source. Okay, I'll wait to hear back. All right, next is the... Um, Ross Traver Elementary School, the fire alarm bed that we talked about and discussed, if that needs replaced. Next, we'll have interim financial statements under budget and financial reconciliation reports from August 2000, uh, from the last meeting, 2021. Investment reports, 
also from August 2021. And, um, pro card procurement card activity, bills presented for payment, bills for fixed char um, charges, the athletic fund report, student activity fund, reconciliations. Next item would be um, Marion Elementary School, the flooring installation. I just have a question. Where did that come from? Like who's? Of six six thousand seven hundred and twelve dollars. Yeah. It's been. I it's think been, we, we approved that. Right, but somebody is we, donating the materials. Where did that come from? I'm sorry. Okay, but where? Who are they? Who's speaking? That's Mallory. Oh, hey, Mallory. <laughs> um, did we request that or did they offer to? I think they offered it. This is sent over to me by Jason. Okay. I'll ask Jason. Okay. I so we're going to pay nice. for, we're paying for the installation. Yeah, we're paying, um, we're paying oh, for the installation. And the materials yeah. were done. Here. Yeah, I think that's very nice. But yeah. I was just curious how we got that hook up because right. we could use more hook ups like that. Sure. If they want to give us more flooring, we'll be glad to yeah. accept. President Lake, are we able to add where the source of funding for that is coming from since it's an unbudgeted item to the agenda item for next week? We sure can. We can definitely add that. Pardon that in here. He wants to add where we got. She wants to add where we got. Oh, okay. My question is, how did this even end up on the agenda if that wasn't ran? If it wasn't run through your office financially? Which item you're talking about? This flooring. The flooring. Another one. Her question is, how did how did say the truck? You didn't you didn't know about the truck. I did not. So how did that get on the agenda? I believe Jason gave it directly to Mallory. Directly to Mallory. Correct. Right. And then with the flooring? So same thing. Same thing. Yeah, we just need to have a problem. So we're problem. worried about the That's protocol true. and it chain of true. events, correct? Well, any unbudgeted item, like yeah, it's, it's great that, that they donated it. You know, we appreciate it, but any unbudgeted item like the labor to install it needs to be approved by the board because it's not budgeted. So we need to, we should say that it's coming out of capital funds or out of repairs and maintenance budget or you know out of somewhere um, on the agenda. And even just the acceptance of the donation you'd want to have on the agenda. Right. Right. Is, was this didn't they get flooring for what was it the library? Is this in lieu of that or this is just additional flooring? I believe this is additional flooring. But I, again, I, I'm not sure. I okay. only see what you see on the agenda. Okay. Right. And this work was already completed, right? No, no, no. no. It's Mallory, do we know where this flooring is going to go, or do you know anything about it? Is this the library? Library is the classroom. There was, I believe, there was uh, a report of some sort of water damage towards the beginning of September, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And that carpeting was going to be in need of replacement. So, uh, man and carpet and tile. When they were consulted about the carpeting. I believe they said that they had this tile that they wanted to try, but would not install. So I believe that's how it came to be is that there was a water issue there and to mitigate that it was removal of carpet and installation of the flooring. Okay. This raises a question with me. If it was water damage, is it covered by our insurance to the extent that it might cover the labor that's costs of this? That's a good question for Ms. Clark. There just needs to be a better source of- Flow of, of communication. Yeah. Yeah. Even for us, because I don't know, that, do we even know about the water damage? I don't. I think we can maybe chalk this one up to a little <clears> bit <throat> of all the uncertainty that happened over the summer, maybe a little bit of disconnect there in, in lines of communication. Yeah. Uh, I don't, uh, I, I don't feel anything was maliciously done here in any of these cases. No, I, think I think it's, it's right yeah, I, I think it's just a case of where, you know, we had a little bit of flux over the summer. And, uh, you know, unfortunately with that flux, we do have, you know, some protocols and, and things and chains of command that don't, don't always stay the same, so. Oh, I, sure, absolutely. I think it's great that they're donating the flooring. I just was curious how that it, it occurred really more than anything. And there may be additional liability and or culpability because uh, our roofs are guaranteed 
and because they didn't get to it fast enough or appropriate or, 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 or fix it soon enough, there may be a, another issue here too. So maybe multiple parties, but I'm saying basically, we get the installation paid through by insurance, we probably got a deal. Well, we'll get on it, Joe. I have another question to add. The canopy money for, we got it? Hey, Chris, we got the canopy money from? The settlement. I have not seen a check yet. Right, but it's in process, right? I believe so. Well, yeah, it's yeah. not, we don't have We it. approved the settlement, <laughs> yeah, I'll follow up. Is her name Jessica? Yeah. Um, I'll follow yeah. up with Jessica. Yeah. yeah, I was like, it was small in. It was approved, yeah. but we don't have the check. Oh, it's not check. No, it's in the yeah. construction yeah. grounds. Is there a modified yes, sort of that, canopy that Slater or somebody's trying to look at it to design? It doesn't come in yeah. the full yeah. thing yeah. all the way out there, but there's something that's in process. Small. Yeah. Yeah. Where it attached to the main entrance on the side there between the uh, plot area and the main building. Dr. Gr Dr. Grata, I think that we decided to table that till spring to revisit when, spring. once the prices of lumber and things kind of came down I a little bit. I think you're right. Thank you very much. Well, it was you're steel. Yeah. We're not using lumber, but it was price of steel. Okay. Everything is still yeah. so possible. And also, I think we were waiting to get check in January before we did that. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. So it's, it's I'm slightly, uh, more than anything else, just so that we don't leave it off the radar. But there was a modified steel canopy. So, all right, we're down to the credit recovery reimbursement. There's five middle school students um, that through the ESSER ARP funds, um, if they submit for credit recovery for the summer that we're gonna reimburse through those funds. And um, we also have a spreadsheet of high school students that was turned in today um, that we will request be added to the agenda for next week. Okay. Thank you. Now we're down to regular policies. I, um, the first one is trauma informed approach. And I'm not really familiar. Are you familiar with these, Dr. Uh, Williams? Yeah, I can speak to some of those if you want. You wanna, to yeah, you want to go through one. those. Uh, Trauma-informed instructional approach is a uh, requirement to stem from uh, Act 44, 2018, and then amended into Act 26 and Act 19. Um, Trauma-informed approach is about um, dealing with students who might have some sort of traumatic experience in their life, uh, opening resources to them, and also using those experiences as a guide to help them with any sort of disciplinary issues that might arise uh, and really get to the heart of um, restoration of well-being for students. So it's a, a training that's required of all teaching staff uh, to be aware of trauma stimuli that could affect the student's learning or social emotional health. Uh, item number two is weapons policy, uh, which is an update. Uh, there are a few items in there uh, that the state has changed uh, some of the wording, um, nothing monumental, uh, just updated uh, language in there. Terroristic threats, um, quite literally, the, the term terroristic threat was embedded in the policy now. It had been a term that was non-existent, basically. Uh, so that updates policy 218.2. Uh, threat assessment establishes another requirement of Act 44, um, requiring all school districts to have a threat assessment team. Uh, what that means is at any time, uh, some type of a threat is alleged against another person or the school building itself, uh, a team of individuals assesses that threat and helps guide a district response. Uh, so the threat assessment team is something that needs to be established at a minimum at, at the district level uh, with recommendation for individual building threat assessment teams. Uh, the school wellness policy is one that we've seen time and time again. There's enhanced language there, recommendations on um, nutritious foods they have for snacks and parties and things of the sort. So it's updated language as far as school wellness is concerned. Uh, dating violence uh, addresses uh, relationship issues uh, between and among students. Uh, that's updated language in there. God bless you. Um, item number seven uh, on preparedness and response and item number eight are related one to the other. Uh, those are also areas that are under the purview of the school, the school district safe and secure schools coordinator. And that's about your preparedness to respond to emergencies, et cetera. And school security personnel is further definition uh, and regulation about um, 
what school security personnel are able to have on their persons um, in the execution of their responsibilities. It differentiates between security staff, school police officers, school resource officers, and things of the like, and that's language pertaining there too. Dr. Williams, would I be correct in that most of these are revisions other than um, the one regarding the threat assessment? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, they're all revisions. All right, so we're down to personnel, resignations, and retirements. Number one is Julie Gauker. Number two is Ricky Bogman. And three is Martha Gratis. So we'll need a motion to approve each one of those on Monday meeting. We have substitute hires. Um, Emily Marshall, Beth Betula, Marjorie White, and Christian Bordolani. Lana. Um, regular hires. Andrea Shutterly, four hour aid. Colton Schmeltz, van driver. Joe Mercedes. Mercedes, Mercedes, van driver. Robert Zolock, van driver. Michael Gillette, bus driver. And James Ancrum, bus driver. Van and bus drivers. Extracurricular activities. Jeff Adams is the media team advisor. Dan Sipley, mentor. Chris Dasha, mentor. Angela, do I have to name all these? Uh, you don't have to. You can just say it's listed. Okay, listed <laughs> below. And the mentor is helping. That's the, for the teacher, right? New right. teacher hires. Okay. We got volunteer coaches. Um, next, we have interns. Director Gross, or I'm sorry, Director Waco. Director Hable, he pointed out that under Chris Stasha, it says a board approved Adam Ziski as a teacher mentor. I assume that's what's it? Pardon? Under name Chris Stash, it says Board of Education approved Adam Ziski as a teacher mentor. So I don't know. I, I talked to Mallory. It was just a typo. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know. That's, that's my is, should, is it Chris or is it Adam? That's it's Chris. Yeah. It's Chris. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it says All right. typo. Good catch. All right. Unpaid leave. Listed employees are below. FMLA. Again, the employees are listed by number. Um, next is facility usage request tier three. And we can, we have a recital. We have a uh, softball practice listed below. Next, we'll get down to committee reports. Director Weiss, yes. Um, before we hire um, anyone under the ESP two contract, we want to make sure we have a placeholder on the agenda to approve the ESP two contract. That will be we'll be asking you to vote on that next week to ratify that. Yeah, we're. I mentioned that. Okay. I just want to make sure it gets on the agenda before we hire. So they it's call. on. It's. No, I think that's just the MOU. And this is the MOU. Yeah. You don't have the formal. Okay. No, we'll There's, have to add, assuming yeah. that the board is fine with it, a separate agenda item to approve that CBA. Okay. ESP2, I believe their membership is set to ratify that this Saturday. I believe that's what I, what I understand. So we would have to have it on go live before on Sunday. Yeah, we would have we to have it Sunday. on Sunday. Yes. Right. You can wait and see whether or not it's uh, ratified and then add it Sunday no later than what six o'clock. Like yeah. So 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 is it possible for us for us to put it on the agenda now? Sure. And then basically if it sure. does not get rat ratified, obviously we'd take it off our agenda, but if it does get ratified, 
we have it on. So that's why we meet the criteria for. Yeah, I think so that's, that's your point. Is let's put it on the agenda. And assuming it'll get ratified Saturday, then we'll be in position to approve it on, on Monday. It's always easy to pull up. We want to make sure it's above the height. All right. So what Crystal's saying is we want to make sure we ratify the new contract before we hire anybody under the new contract. Because if we hire them before the new contract, they'll be under the old contract. Right. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, although at the same time, you're going to adjust everybody's salary, you know, assuming there's retroactive increases. So, right. but nevertheless, I, yeah. I saw yeah. it. I, just, I will. Yeah. Do we need a separate item to retroactive, or is that in the same motion as ratifying? No, I think that's part of the ratification. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. All right, so we're down to committee reports, facilities and grounds and transportation, athletics and activities, curriculum and technology and arts committee, and then the personnel committee. And then at the end of the meeting, we'll have comments again by citizens reading the same two minute statement. That's it. Any questions? I do have a question. It's about uh, back to the ratification of the um, ESP2 contract. Crystal, um, I heard you say that we'll go back and retro pay. Um, for example, someone retired, someone in the ESP2, say cafeteria. Um, Shouldn't everyone bump up even before it's ratified since it's in the current contract? Um, I, I don't believe so, but that's something that I can discuss with uh, Russ and Amy. Right. To make sure it's done appropriately. But when the new contract, we're going to be using two, uh, there's nine steps in the cafeteria. And mm -hmm. formally, we weren't using two of them. But in this contract, we discussed with them, we're going to use all nine steps. So I'm not sure where that person would go before slash after. Um, does that answer? Yeah. Okay. And anything Thank retroactive, you. Crystal, they just kind of expand on Director Calway Rodriguez's question. It would be going back to the uh, beginning of the new school year, so July 1st, 2021. Right. And right. The, um, the bus drivers, um, the cafeteria haven't worked until the new school year started. Um, but we're going to have to retro their wages and then retro what they owe us for health contributions, care, right? for contributions okay. and they're going to pay for dental and vision um, upgrades. So, so. All, although the contract expired, you know, during or even before the 20, 2020 and 21 school year, it only goes retroactive to, to, to the beginning of the new school year, the current school year, and, and basically last year it's done. Right, we agreed to a freeze for that year one of the contract, and then year two, we agreed to do retro in our bargaining session. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, Crystal, ESP, <laughs> ESP1 is who? ESP1 is our secretaries and our aides. Okay. It's the MOU was. Like they're agreeing. Was for ESP one. Yeah. Just did. What yes. was the MOU? The MOU we just did was for ESP one. What was what was the MOU? What was it? Oh, it was um for it sort of vacancy. Yes. And uh, the position, you, the individual that's holding that vacancy for um and, and where they're placed for 21 22 All right. Yep. You remember that. I just remember. Okay, and ESP2 is the uh, custodians, bus drivers. Bus drivers. We're going to have a, we're going to add to an agenda to, for us to approve that contract. Yes, ESP2. Right. Yes. I mean, you guys, it sounds like you have consensus to do that. Right. Yes. We're going to get a ratification. Yeah, yeah, right. And there's a Saturday. Or something. Correct. Okay. So, you want I to drop the motion or yeah. together? I'd like to put that on. Sure. For my thing. Sounds like there's consensus to do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Any comments out? 
Yeah, you have two minutes. But you have to come down to this microphone. But your clock started now, so run. Hold on a second. <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah, you have two minutes to make an opening statement. <laughs> this is called the Jody Winwood rule. Hey, I'm the best thing. I'm speaking as a parent for my employer. Jody, right, right here. Okay. All right, Jody from the Um, I'm speaking as a parent for my employer. Um, as you all know, Monday is going to be crazy. Um, I actually got a phone call last week because my, I actually got a phone call. A couple text messages from Mr. Jeremy. My son was crying. As you don't know, my son has lots of crying because he has to learn this. We all know this is a control thing with government books. We also know that with the exemption that Bob Vernon is asking for doctors, like, right. We all know this is a HIPAA, a HIPAA badge. We know that there's districts in our area that are, don't have to have a doctor sign on them. As a parent, I don't agree with these maps. And as an employee right now, I see our kids struggling day and day and the kids telling us that they have headaches. If my son and I have a headache. So, I am speaking to our other parents on Monday. What's going on in school do? Are they going to stand up to look and fight for our children? Or are you going to stand there and keep our children behind masks? Mask what do you got to do? Please answer them speaking as the parents. All right, so I'll, I can answer some of that. Jody. Our original plan was to go choice, okay? But because I wasn't going to have, I wasn't going to make, <laughs> see, you beat that. You beat that. But what happened was every school was, some were mandating, some weren't. We had, there were fights at the school level. Okay, you had North Hills, parents going at it. We had parents coming to our meeting saying, you're putting our child at harm by not having a mask, everything, it was chaotic. The state stepped in and took the heat off the school board. In my, this is my opinion. So what happened is they just made it mandatory. They just went blanket mandatory. No, you can't, we had, you, Ken sent me, Dr. Williams sent me what happens if we don't go by the mandate. And I'm not gonna do it. I'm not going to go against the mandate. I can tell you that right now. It's called extortion, Jody. The definition of extortion is the practice of obtaining something, especially money through force or threats. That's what Governor Wolf is doing right now. He, along with the Department of Education, as well as other lobbyists in Harrisburg, are currently extorting school districts and local taxpayers. And they're not giving them their money unless they follow the rules that have been put in place by our governor, who we're stuck. Hempfield, right now. Jody, I'm. Dr. Williams is going to make a yeah, comment. So, and, and I'll defer um, to Mr. Lucas to correct me if I'm misspeaking, but there are several school districts across the Commonwealth who have filed suit against that mandate. Um, that's yet to be litigated. Once it's heard and ruled upon, that will help provide direction for the other 500 or so school districts in the, in the Commonwealth. Okay. So that's already a suit that's out there. And once it's ruled on, we'll get further direction. Now, the legislature is also back in session, and I know that one of their items to discuss is challenging that mandate. So procedurally, what will happen is the legislature will get together, they'll rule on that mandate, and they'll try to overturn that. 
which we know that ruling will go to the governor's desk and he has the power of veto. So if you, if you play the odds, if the House and Senate carry it, it looks like Governor Wolf will have to rule on that again and probably veto it, in which case they'll try to do an, a veto override. And it's questionable whether or not they'll have enough votes to do the veto override. So if I'm misspeaking or, or no, not right. characterizing that right. No, so right. it's a whole process that's going through. For us to jump on that at this point, I don't know that it would be uh, advantageous or fruitful for us to do that because it's already in process. Yeah, but it's not going to make the process go any quicker if we jump on it. And yeah, I understand I mean, completely what you're saying. The uh, the litigation that's been commenced in the Commonwealth Court, uh, that was filed by Butler School District and Slippery Rock, and then one of the school districts out east. And the Commonwealth Court ordered last week that it would be uh, submitted and decided on briefs. So that case um, should be decided, I would think, within the next couple of weeks, as far as whether or not there was and the exact argument that's being advanced there is whether there was authority on the part of the Department of Health to issue that that mandate. So that's the very issue that a lot of people are raising. Obviously, whoever's unhappy with what the Commonwealth Court does could try to get the Pennsylvania Supreme Court to take another look at it. But candidly, that process is in motion. So other than adding your name to it and you know potentially um, incurring legal fees, there really isn't much at this point that the district could do uh, that would actually be of, of any significance in that matter. I know other school districts are going through the same process. I know that Hemfield had the discussion last night and authorized um, their solicitors to, to uh, look at the process. But you know, I, I think that given that we know the legislature has the ability to address this and that there is a pending lawsuit which should be decided shortly I'm not sure really that it that it would add much, um, you know, if the district wants to take action to support that uh, in terms of like a resolution of support, that's one thing, but in terms of trying to be added as an additional party, I'm not sure that that has the bang for the buck, candidly. But. So is everybody. Everybody's waiting for the lawsuits to be resolved. Listen, Jody, the last 18 months have been the longest two weeks to flatten the curve of my entire life. I understand where you're coming from. My, my, my son had to spend the last six days not in school because somebody at the lunch table diagonal from him. And, and, and the, 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 the kid that was exposed to him, by Monday, they were fine. They played, they did with their soccer game and stuff, but my kid had to sit at home. The, you know, the restriction of the movement of healthy people was tyranny. It's, it's not it's not public health. When yeah. you tell a healthy person that they can't leave their house, but they don't, they don't stay home. Nobody stays home. You know what? When's the last time anybody in Walmart got contact traced? When's, when's, the, last, when's the last time anywhere out in public, somebody was like, oh, well, they're positive. We've got to shut this building down. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen anywhere except for here where the racket, and I'm going to call it the racket, big Department of Education and other people that are in charge they, they just they throw their lobby and their money around so they can be in control. That's all this is. But do you see, just, let me interject. I see the point with the state stepping in. Every school, Justin, 
And I said this before, North Hills, you were having fighting one side of the audience to the other. Everybody was running rampant. It was becoming chaotic. And I'm not, I wasn't going to mandate it. Okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell Jody to wear a mask. I drive a bus and I take care of 200 kids. I am not getting paid enough in the city of Pittsburgh to enforce the mask. I mean, buses are stopping and they're making kids wear masks. I'm not doing it. Of course, I don't even call the cops if there's a fight on my bus. I'm not taking any more time out of my day to do that. So the bottom line is the state, do you see what would happen here? The state came in and just stepped in because schools, each school, one school had a mandate, one school didn't. People were, I saw the school board meeting at North Hills. These people were fighting. They're in, you see what I'm saying? Nobody could police themselves. You have to understand what happened though. He stepped in and did, he just said a mandate, right? Am I, am I right? No, he didn't. Right. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He was the Department of Health. Yeah, he, he didn't end around. He I know, but Justin, 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 that's, he took the easy way out and he took the heat off each school district. But Dan, go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, I just like to characterize it in a sense that, you know, we as board members, you know, our, our prime, primary purpose is to make sure students and children are getting an education reasonably, responsibly, and safely. Unfortunately, you know, I, I've, I'm going on three years serving on the board, and unfortunately, my, my, my tenure has been during a global health crisis pandemic that has now become politicized. You have now have, you know, a very big division in the country that is starting at the national level, going to the state level, and down at the local level. And we as Americans, we can't even go to car dealerships and buy automobiles when we need them because we're so dependent on other countries. So, so, so again, I mean, just staying on topic, you know, we're not just sitting around. One thing we have to be feel proud of is from day one, Bell Vernon Area School District has provided un, uninterrupted education in person for those people that wanted in-person education and instruction. And for those people that wanted remote, we offer DVAEA or cyber charter school, or they have elections. So, so we're giving people choices. Is, is Director White Co and their solicitor. None of us w w wanted this order or mandate to come down, but unfortunately it came, whether it was through the Pennsylvania Department of Health, Pennsylvania Department of Education, or the governors, it's, it's irrelevant because the impact, what we have to make decisions as local leadership on school boards, number one is legal and financial risk. So right now you have to look at it. God forbid someone, you know, a student, a staff member, become sick, you know, and unfortunately in the most extreme cases passes away. What, what position is the district going to be in if that happens and we don't follow the mandate? Will our insurance co 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 cover the district? Will the insurance cover the individual school, school board members? Our solicitor, our superintendent is for the information and I'll share even Ringgold School District is uh, uh, early as last, uh, last week. The insurance carrier will not cover and provide insurance coverage for the district, for the board members in the event of a lawsuit. So, so again, you know, so all these extremists are making these cases. I've yet, and Crystal, have we received any a $5 million or $10 million donation to the school district by some of these people that don't want us to follow a mandate? We have not. So, I, I, I mean, again, if someone wants to donate money that we could use to cover the district and individuals, I'd be, I'd be more than gladly to take that donation. But again, you know, please understand the biggest thing, and I've explained it, I got a couple of calls from school board members today. The biggest thing that makes me happy is when I look outside my window in the morning and I see that yellow bus coming, picking up students, I still see them getting on the bus with masks. I see them kissing their mommies and daddies and they're getting an education. So at the point in time, the only thing that I'd ask, you know, the board, the administration in the community, it's just a little more patient. Let, the, let, 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 let this battle pan out in Harrisburg because we're not going to resolve this at the local level. It's just going to continue to divide us. But one thing, let's just continue to focus on the positives because one thing over the last three years, have we missed an in-person graduation for any of our seniors? Yes or no? No. No, the answer is no. We've provided an in-person graduation. Have we provided the option as much as possible for in-person education Plus last year, did we get a member of understanding with our collective bargaining uh, unit 
to provide a remote option offered by our instructors. So, 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 so we are trying to work together to do the best we can, but this is just not a battle that we're gonna resolve, uh, resolve at the local level. And the biggest thing that I'll say, the, the, the biggest thing that these extremists want us to do is fight amongst ourselves. Let's be better than that. Let's just stick together and keep our eye on the prize. And that's the kids, the students. They're receiving an education and they're getting the positive experiences, whether it's through the fall play, whether it's through athletics, whether it's through any activity, let's keep focused on those kids. Put all of our personal, keep focused. Because at the end of the day, the aid's gonna come back on the politician's face that's trying to divide this country that's feeding down to the local level. So thank you. Thank you. We, we know, Jody, we know, we know. Okay. You have to come down and you want to take a two minute shot again? <laughs> they can't hear you on. <clears throat> what are you going to, what are you saying? See, the thing is, if we had, I'm, I'm just going to interrupt. If we had a whole full audience, you couldn't keep coming. I know. We're, so, so, my other question is, so, like, not for my life, they did not have to have it's like a perception. They did not have to have a doctor sign on. So, how can they learn? You have to have the doctor. I, that would be ridiculous. Everybody would be signed on. No paper. How could you? Exempt. You'd exempt everybody. I exempt you, Joe. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't do that. Jody, come on. They didn't. I, I, I would say that's false. But this Eric Devanzo, can I just, I mean, this guy is just pandering, in my estimation, to the public. I don't, if I go further. Yeah. Again, I'm not a trying. politician. I yeah. don't like any politician. See, I'm not on anybody's side. I'm not on the left. I'm not on the right. So I can't argue. You know what I mean? I don't like anybody. So that's it. That's it. I mean, that's false. Okay. Whatever they're saying and whatever you're hearing is false. There's they're no trying, way. They're trying to, they're, they're, they're trying to divide time. people. And, 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 no, we, we, we're not fighting again. We're fighting for the children and we're winning. And we're winning with the way we're, with, uh, the way we're measuring winning is Belvern and area is providing an education. We're providing extracurricular activity. We're providing athletics. We're, we're, we're providing instruction. And even for the people that's getting working, we're working together to come up with the, the ones that are out of school that wanted an in-person instruction. We're working with our collective bargaining unit there you go. To, 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 <laughs> to provide instruction to them. We, so, so, so again, when you, when you look at all this data and, and, and we mentioned, you know, uh, different big, big shop stores, the only thing that this, the, the, these people that we're concerned about is Belvin Area School District. In the last 18 months, 24 months, guess what? Belvin Area has not have, had a child die of COVID. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, th thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you. The staff, we haven't had a ser serious uh, hospitalization. And that's what we just had a conversation with our new superintendent, Jody, in, in the sense that we want to start tracking the people that are becoming ill if we can. What is, what is their recovery time? What is their seriousness? We have to feel proud. I mean, again, again, answer the question. Did we provide in-person graduation to the last two classes of graduating students? Yes or no? Yeah, but my question yes. Is, okay. Yes. Question kids as well is, I'm speaking as a parent. If we can do the couple games, which is four kids, and then they can get the buildings, we have to keep our kids cut. We can go home. We can go anywhere. But in this building, we have to keep our kids. Jody, do you do you, do you trust the educators of Belvern School District? Stand. You know where I'm coming from. Right. I, 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 this is down a long, long right. road. So do you, do you where I'm at now is a totally different road. Do you think so they're giving them? Do you think they're giving them mass breaks? Um, yes, my children. I was told that. Okay. But do you think? Do you? I mean, again, do you think? Yeah. 
do I think? I'm going to buy one of these for my kids, and I was told from Abigail, no. See, and, and, and again, you know, we, a lot of us have children in the school district, uh, uh, Jody. My kids, you know, we have a good conversation with them each day. They're willing to wear, I mean, do they want to wear masks? I don't think any of us want to wear masks, but are they willing to get the education to be with their schoolmates to, 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 to experience the once in a lifetime opportunities? Yes, they're willing to do that. I asked the same question. I could tell you my kids say, hey, hey, every one of our teachers and, and every one of our administrators are very reasonable. They're always checking in on them. How are you doing in the classroom, outside the classroom, giving mass breaks? I think a lot of our issues and a lot of the people that will probably speak Monday are speaking on the behalf of their, their views and their self. But when I personally talk to not only my children, but children amongst the district, they're very thankful that they're in school. And I think that's the biggest problem we're faced with. I think we have adults actually acting like children and the children are actually more mature and recognizing that they're getting the education they need. So I'm just asking, let's keep united and let's just keep fighting for the kids and keep these kids in school as much as possible. And I think we've done that over the last two, three years. I, we've I, done I, that. We've I, done I, it. I'm not looking at the child, Dan. It's very important in these classrooms, especially young children, that you need to see the teacher face the expression of the teachers is very, very important, especially to a child, and especially mom. And to join with autism, if that is very important, these kids have to see these things to the face. Not behind the mask. You have to see the face. You have to. Jim, I, I think you're, I don't know where this came from. You have to see a face. I'm happy not seeing a face. So. <laughs> These kids, I don't think, I think you're underestimating. I was, I was just gonna, You're underestimating. No, you're underestimating just, your child. You're underestimating your child. You know what? You're underestimating your child. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. I don't see it as a big deal. I'd rather them be in school with a mask. Okay. And, and, and again, Judy, this is not our choice. This is an order coming from the I, state. So again, we're, we're not necessarily <laughs> disagreeing with you. Our preference is to see a face. We just can't do that now without jeopardizing the legal and financial risk of this district. Like I said before, again, our insurance, again, I have not had an individual conversation with Tom Severchek or CSC insurance, but I would be willing to bet if the district chooses not to follow a state order and something would happen in a lawsuit that comes back against the district and the individual school board members, they're not gonna cover the legal cost, Jody. Are you, is someone gonna donate the millions of dollars that it's gonna take the district to cover? Are you going to? Or yes or no? Yes, yeah, I mean, that's all the answers. Yes or no? Okay. So please understand. I'm going to say, though, I'm not seeing as a parent, I'm also an employee, and I don't want to go against an employee, but I'm, 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 I'm over this. I see every day, I see the struggle with our kids. I'm in the building, I see it, I see it. I'm Jody, I see my kids struggle. Jody, Jody, I do 200 kids a day, 200. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing the struggle. You're not. You want to come with me? You want to see the You want to come with me? You want me to go to the city? I'll take you to the ghettos. And Jody, I'm not seeing it. I agree with you with the mask. I do. But I thank you. And he, but please hear me. And I and I cannot speak for every board member up here, but what I can tell you is this. When we voted to go choice, that should tell you majority of the board felt the way you do. Okay. It upsets you, it upsets me just as much. Right. But you know what? Here's us. Our hands are tied. There's nothing we can do. We have got to listen to that order, to that mandate. It's a, it's a state issue. It is not a local issue. We, there's nothing that we can do. It, it upsets me. I don't wear my mask. And I don't wear it at work. I'm not forced to wear it at work. It upsets me just to know that the kids have to wear them in schools. And then I watch um, the BVA high school football game and the crowd that we've had was phenomenal and I didn't see any masks. It's frustrating. It's, a, it's frustrating to both sides, but there's nothing we can do. 
You're welcome. So basically, there's nothing we can do. It's extortion. I told you, it's extortion. You know, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be adversarial, Jody, but there's nothing. There's nothing. Jody, there's already the lawsuit out there. It doesn't matter if we join in on the lawsuit. That lawsuit is going to take place. They're going to um, rule on that lawsuit. We're going to stand by it. It should be done so soon, as our attorney had said, our solicitor. And hopefully, you know, it absolutely, because that's what I'm waiting for. What's that? Yeah, you do. You'd be surprised. Your kids are, your kids are tough. All right. We'll see you. All right, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Adjourn. Thank you. Yeah, we can.